Hi, my name is Yvette Puentes and this is my video blog called Multiverse. So I had promised to make a video about space and time and it took me a little long. So I want to apologize for that, but I was a little bit sick and then I had a lot of teaching, you know, academic life is a bit like that. So until now I found um, a window of time to do the video. I actually have a visitor called um, uh, Daniele Faccio and he's at the moment talking with a colleague of mine here in Vienna called Chaslav Bruckner. But I was thinking that when Daniele comes back, I might convince him uh, to do a little interview with me. That would be very nice because I would have another video to, to show you. I want to do that. I want to take advantage of all the interesting people that visit me and um, make uh, interviews and so on and um, also present that, that kind of material to you. So anyway, I was telling you I wanted to talk about space and time. So let's get started with that. So we all uh, have an experience about what um, space and time are. So actually, I wanted to um, go into my son's school. I actually did that and he gave a talk there. My aim was to explain to 11 year olds what is time dilation. That was like my little experiment and so on. So I started to talk about um, space and time and it was very, a very interesting experience and I actually want to get started a bit how I, I started with them. So I, I asked the students, um, do you know what time is? And they all raised their hands, they were very like sure about it. And then I picked one of the students and I asked uh, her, so, so what's time? And she just stared at me and she felt like she was going to answer clearly and then suddenly she just froze and she said, well, time is time. And that was exactly the kind of ex answer that I was expecting. I said, yes, exactly. You don't need to be a physicist or a philosopher or so to say, you know, what time is in the sense we all experience time. So we don't all have a notion of time in that sense, in the sense of um, uh, being familiar and having an experience of what it is. And that's because we see children grow, we see people get older, we see things move in time. And actually our whole lives revolved around time. Um, at what time are we meeting? I don't have enough time for this, um, and so on. So um, our lives revolved about the notion of time, but it's not easy at all to um, put it into words and into physical concepts or philosophical concepts and so on. And in fact, there's a lot of people working on that. Um, so when I was um, an undergraduate student, I realized that I didn't, after some time, I, I, I realized I wasn't really understanding the concept. And um, the more I thought about it, the more complicated it got. So I did what a lot of physicists just do, which is just like put it in the back and say, okay, for now I have a test next week and I just you know, need to get on with, with my work and I just use it, you know, time is a parameter that I can use to take the derivative. Um, of quantities like positions and so on and well I kind of thought I'll leave that for when I grow up to think seriously about time. So around two years old, uh, two years ago I thought okay maybe it's time that I start thinking about time. I think that any serious physicist should do that at some point. And well I'll tell you in other videos about what's my way of trying to understand what time is, and I'm trying to understand obviously time and the overlap of quantum mechanics and general relativity, which becomes very interesting, and I think it's at the heart of the inconsistencies between uh, the theories. So anyway, as I said, we all have this experience of what time is, and we also have a notion of what space is in the same way. We can see Actually, something that's very interesting is in the classical world, we'll talk about what that is. We see things occupying one place and only one at a given time. And we all also know that uh, space is three-dimensional. We all uh, know that we live in a three-dimensional space and that objects move in space um, as a function of, of time. We all experience that as well. So something very interesting about space-time regimes is that we um, have a certain space-time, we have space-time dimensions. By that I mean that we measure, I know, you know, up to two meters, very tall people. And um, we also have a dimension of, of time, the, the life 
that we live will have longer life. So let's say, I don't know, 100 years or something like that. I want to live 100 years. So, um, so, so this sets the, the dimensions in which we live, this sets sort of the physical world that we observe. And in this regime of space-time dimensions, what we perceive, what we see, is the classical world. So the classical world is the world described by the laws of Newton, for example. And it's very interesting because we all understand uh, in an intuitive way uh, the laws of Newton. When you learn them in high school, you might not like the math and you might find uh, the math difficult and you might not want to do it, but you understand the concepts because we describe things like, well, you throw a ball and it bounces back and how things would uh, tumble down, um, let's say, an inclined uh, street and so on. So the theory is in harmony with our experience and in that sense, we can feel that we understand it. And it's also that our brains evolved perceiving these space-time regimes, so our minds and our brains evolved in a way that um, all these effects that we watch are just uh, natural and we have um, what you would call a um, common, it's part of our common sense. But something that is super interesting is that if you go to different space-time regimes, nature, reality becomes very different. So if we go to the very, very small, we have quantum mechanics. And if we go to the very, very big, we have general relativity. So what I want to do in the next videos is that I want to take you there. I want to take you first to the world of the very, very small, the world of quantum mechanics, and explain to you a little bit how would the world look like in, uh, from that point of view. And then we will go to the world of the very big spatial dimensions, where general relativity tells us how the universe uh, behaves. And we will have a lot of things to talk about these um, uh, topics. So I'll leave that for another video. I wanted to thank people who uh, saw this video blog and made a lot of suggestions. So uh, friends of mine were telling me about the light. So I don't have the light right yet, but I think it's better than last time. And people were also telling me to make the video short and that's not so easy. And I think what happened is like, I had all these nice suggestions, but I was just thinking about making the video uh, to, to incorporate all of those and it just becomes a bit more stressful and I just end up not doing them as well. So for now, I'll just think that the most important thing is to get these videos out there and slowly I'll start to incorporate all your nice suggestions and I please ask you to keep making the uh, suggestions and so on. So um, yes, I will try to convince Daniele to make a video and um, perhaps we will continue for that. Thanks for watching.